Hi everybody, I'm Christian and welcome to Lazy Devs Academy. Welcome to our tutorial about how to make a roguelike in Pico 8. We are doing pretty well. Although there is one problem that I didn't... Mm. So uh, last time around when we went through, um, through some testing, we realized that there was a situation where one of the rooms or we found ourselves like in a corner and I was like really struggling what to what happened there I actually went back to the recording to kind of understand how this level was generated I thought I was really stressed out because I thought our starting point was an area that was disconnected from our ending point and by looking exactly at the footage I realized that actually no we were both like in a little, tiny little hallway in a corner maybe I will display this we're a tiny little corner um, that was isolated from the rest of the level and that corner had the entrance and the exit so that at least you know we weren't we could actually advance through that level you wouldn't be get stuck but the problem that, that that we have with this thing is that well it's um it's a it's kind of like a broken level and we already, already talked about this um we don't really have anything in our uh, in our we don't have an algorithm is not can generate levels that do not fully reconnect. It's possible to create like a wall of of, um, of uh, rooms that isolate one room from like the rest of the level, and that would result in you know this one level, uh, this one room not being completely able to reconnect. Especially when the rooms are like two tiles uh, away, it's not really possible to drill wall walls in between. Three tiles away is fine, and being like one tile away from each other is also fine because you can drill a wall. Um, uh, a thing in between but two tiles um, distances are as something that our generator doesn't deal w well with and I've been actually doing some research um, so I actually had like a che checklist here I actually went through like generated um, a bunch of levels like had like an automated level generator to kind of figure out you know how often this happens how often do we have situations where areas are disconnected from each other and uh, I got like <laughs> interesting like sometimes you know what I think the first time I tried it was like this 20 22nd level I generated had a had an issue and I was like really ooh so that's very frequent but then like 134 500 I generated 500 levels in a row until I got a disconnected one then 196 187 so you know you in the hundreds and then I, eventually I, I got also some some um, sooner situation like 42, 44, 21, even back in 21. So sometimes, you know, there's a huge variation, obviously, because it's something that's very much driven by a random number generator. And so sometimes you will get like 500 generators, 500 levels in a row without no issues whatsoever. But then suddenly, you know, every 20th level. But, you know, and like 20 is the worst case scenario that I found so far, like after a couple of times. So this is not really like a frequent issue. You can play through this game multiple times without this being an issue at all, without encountering this issue. However, we might want to um, check for this. So first, check for this problem. Check, just check. And second, we might want to have a situation, uh, a solution for this. So let's first check for this problem. Uh, and there is like, um, I had like a solution, I had like a solution where it's like, after I generate the level, I go through, I loop through the entire, an array of um, of flags and count the flags and so forth, but we are at six thousand five hundred tokens. We cannot afford any token whatsoever. Um, so instead, I had like a solution that is, I think, pretty efficient, and uh, but one that has to be more integrated into our system. Uh, let me explain you what I mean. Uh, so here, we're replacing flags. Mm -hmm. Luri Santa Santana just subscribed. This is so funny. Every time I record, I swear, every time I record. Um, so here, we're replacing the flags. I want to create something else, not just flags, but I want to create a new array called flag lib, a library of all the flags that we used so far. Um, and that will just keep track which of the libraries are on the screen. We can put in, put it in. Uh, which libraries are actually, uh, which of the flags are on the screen, which of the uh, flags are, are being used currently. And then every time we grow a flag, for example here, we're going to go add flag lib um, curve. We add this flag to this library of flags. Uh, and so the only thing that we have to do is now remove those, uh, those flags whenever we decide that we want to delete one of those flags. And we do this here when we um, carve the doors. Remember how we can shorten it up 
we kind of like discover a door. There's two flags on, on the opposite side of the door and we carve through that door and one of the flags kind of cover up the other flag. And we decided that we, we could save up some space, some, some tokens by just saving one of the flags and, and, and le letting that flag grow so we don't really care about the other flag. But actually we might want to bring this back. So it's like F2, F2, F2. So now all of our candidates um, remember both flags, the flag that will supposed to explode and grow and the other flag that will be covered up. And so here, when we grow the flag, we go delete uh, flag lib and D.F2. So whenever we cover one flag with another flag, when we recover one up one flag with another flag, we delete that flag that was covered up from our library. And this kind of like, um, and that's basically it. And so after we're done generating, we should get like, a, um, we could should be able to get a count of how many flags are still on the screen by just looking at um, how, how many entries there are in FlagLib. So we should always end up with uh, FlagLib um, being, having just one entry. Let's see if that works. Okay, one entry, that's good. One entry, good. One entry, one entry. And so whenever we go through all of the reconnection, all of the carved doors, and we realize that a flag lip has more than one, has more multiple entries, that is a sign that something did not recorrect pro properly. And again, most of the times that won't be an issue. But you know, every now and then we will get one of those levels. So what will we do in such a situation? Should we employ some kind of algorithm that tries to kind of like do more aggressive carving to reconnect all the things? We could, but I think at this point, if, if we get that there, we're gonna, we can actually just as well just regenerate the level. The chances for this happening are low enough that we can basically assume that if we just like generate a new level, we will get a, a level that works. So why, you know, going through this process of trying to like fix something, trying to do some kind of complicated, um, uh, you know, algorithms, why not just like recreate the, the level? The levels don't take as much time to regenerate. So we might just as well um, do something like this. Okay, so what I wanna do here is I wouldn't actually, um, because it's, it's like in the, um, the moment where this happens is here after carved doors. This is where we know that our, if our level is structurally sound or not. Um, we should, we can still do shortcuts and so forth, but this is, you know, this, this chunk here, these functions are the functions that are responsible for making a sound skeleton for our level. So what we can do here, we can, we can do this, um, we can put this in a loop, repeat, and then here until flaglib, hashtag flaglib uh, equals one. So this way, and uh, conveniently, you know, um, our rooms are being maybe even, yeah, let's, let's also copy the map. Let's just delete also whatever was on the screen. <clears throat> so this would also take care of the isolated rooms. Um, uh, that's also taken care of. We also have the better monsters and we have the item chest. So really just like mm, the entries, the um, and entrances are something that we haven't dealt with. Okay, so basically this part is just repeated over and over again until Flaglip um, only has one entry at the end. So let's see, um, also if when that happens, it would be kind of nice if we got, um, got some kind of information that we saved something. So it's like, if hashtag Flaglip is greater than one, then debug, Um, let's say, um, reconnected area, um, just like, like a little info for us. It probably won't come up. The problem won't come up, uh, in a long time, uh, but one, if we ever generate a level that's kind of like, um, is being saved by the algorithm, by this algorithm, then I want it to show up. So we can, we're gonna get surprised maybe at some point.
yeah, but this looks good. So this kind of like just a little bit of a coat and it kind of completely changes the way our um, our level generation, like the kind of like levels of generation can, can deal with. Now again, you can every now and then like every one, one level in 100 will take twice as much to generate. It's fine, it will be fine. Fine, what else? What do we else do we need? Uh, well, um, so I thought maybe today we're gonna spend some time because this game is like structurally the way um, compared to the kind of stuff I had in my prototype, this is getting really close now. Um, so what we can do right now is actually start um, start um, adding like some you know quality of life, some kind of like nice look and feel to everything. Just by, for example, uh, when we die, I don't like the way the um, the screen looks when we die, uh, or when we win. Also, it would be nice to show some stats, for example, when you die. So it's not like let me let me die real quick. Yeah, this is just like a placeholder. So let's replace this placeholder, show like a nice little text and maybe some kind of statistics about what you did during your playthrough. And also when you start the game, it's kind of like starts you in the middle of this thing. It would be nice if it showed like maybe some kind of um, logo. And also at the end, I want to add some music to it. I uh, will import the music that we had in our prototype because there's some beautiful music by one my friend Sebastian who, uh, who worked hard uh, and on, on this on the soundtrack here and I really want to share the soundtrack with you guys. Cool. So let us first, um, I prepared something. Um, that was pork underscore stress is my stress test by the way. Import tilemap.png. Okay, so I basically um, put in you dead. <laughs> I could also type in you died here. And then kyobasa get which is uh, you know, here in text and uh, the nice little logo. All of these logos are basically, I went in Photoshop and picked like a nice font. I think in this case it's Minion, could be Minion. Yeah, and then um, in, for Pork, like I did some tweaks. I added like this little logo in the, on the O that looks like a snout of a pig and then added the outlines. <clears throat> This is not the most token efficient way of doing this text. You could probably like make sure that the text size or perfectly fits into into the tiles. Um, it's fine. We don't really need that many tiles anymore. If we need any tiles, we still have a bunch of tiles here and a bunch of tiles in here. And there's even more tiles here. So there's still plenty of tile space for us. And we basically, we I think we'll sooner run out of tokens than we run out of tiles. Um, something to note is I made sure that the text stays within exactly within the sprite um, uh, grid uh, because I don't want to waste tokens to kind of like cut and paste exactly you know the tile the sprite out. I just want to use the SPR function instead of the SSPR function. That's that's my that's my jam. Okay, so um, let us first begin with the logo screen. How are we going to do this? Well, basically, there is no good way of, uh, like, no, um, how we call it? There is no elegant way of, of doing this. I think there is, or I, I don't think I know one. Um, so I would probably just do something like um, logo underscore show equals true, uh, logo underscore t. Uh, equals uh, what they said said it last time around to 240. So kind of like we're gonna show it for 240 frames, and then um, logo underscore y. What I saw said last time around to 35. And so here in the draw function, we're gonna do logo. Or draw logo. <clears throat> and so here function draw logo. <clears throat> and so we're gonna check if it's true. So if draw lo show logo, then then we're gonna count on the timer logo t minus equals one. And then at the end, we're going to go if logo t equ uh, equals zero or smaller equals zero, um, then and logo show equals. I mean, we could even probably d get rid of the logo show, right? 
No, actually we can't. Uh, um, that's the, there's a bit of an issue here. So yeah, um, the problem is the countdown timer is not how long to display the logo. The countdown timer is at which point will this logo animate away. So if the count counter literally zero, we're gonna go logo dot y equals um, let's say how how high is this logo? One oh gosh, one one two three. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be um, three times eight. I have a little tool that calculates this. So minus twenty four uh, plus minus twenty four. Um, minus logo y uh, wait is it like this nope it's this 24 mm, minus 24 minus logo y And then we divide it by some number. What did I do last time around as, a, as, the, as the speed? I kind of like tweaked this around, around a little bit. Let me see. Um, 20. Hmm, and funny enough, I also did it a bit differently there, huh? Um, yeah, why not? Why not? So, um, okay, let me just like, let me just first make sure that this works. Uh, and then if, um, if logo underscore t is smaller than uh, 300. Yeah, let's let's do something like this. So that way we don't need the logo show. Okay, that then we can do something like if logo 300 is, is, great, is smaller than 100, is greater than uh, minus 100, then that allows us to get rid of the logo show. The less variables we have, the better. So if the logo is greater than minus 100, then we animate this, and then we move this. Okay, perfect. Uh, and then, of course, we have to actually draw the logo. So um, we're gonna go uh, S uh, SPR, and then it's gonna be 144. Let me see, seven logo y so 7 is the x coordinate logo y is the y coordinate and then width is 14 height is 3. and then i even went one step ahead and i did an o print 8 so the outline print that i, that I have here with like a little little subline and i call it the quest for elbasa um, and i put it underneath the logo and again this is kind of like stuff that you have to kind of figure out yourself I, um, by trial and error and i did it and we don't want to have less trial and error right now it's going to be white and it's going to have a black background that's why it's seven and zero cool um so one thing to note we have to also do a, let's just see how this this looks at the beginning let's just see okay So the way this animates is not not great, and also we have like the um, like the, the moment where we're checking for this. Everything is, is a bit bad. So first of all, we want to to draw on top of everything else, which is why we put it on all the way down in the draw function. Second of all, I want to um, where is it? Oh god, I've lost it. Okay, here um, we need the pal function, so we're gonna go pal t. So we want to set the transparency, the color number twelve, to transparent. Color number twelve is the blue color, and that's something that we're gonna set to transparent. We're gonna draw the logo and reset it again. Looks better, but also. The black is now not transparent, so we're gonna set that to transparent false. So we get the black outlines that we want. Perfect. I don't like how it animates, so I had like this little 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 trick that I really liked, where I just basically just add logo T to the logo Y. So then um, this starts when logo T gets negative and it starts at one. So it moves one pixel at the, in the first frame, two pixels in the second frame, three pixels on the third frame. So you get like this acceleration. And I think that looks pretty nice. Um, mm, yeah, mm, maybe we divide it. Yeah, let's divide it by 20. Mm 
So now we see it like flying away a little bit. That, I think this is nice. And the only thing that I would maybe change here now is... Um, so let's see. Let's go if logo Y is greater than minus 24. Something like this. Uh -huh. And then, um, so let's see if that works. So we only do this as long as logo Y is still on the screen. And that will allow us to do the following. Whenever we press a button, we reset the logo T to zero. So the logo disappears earlier if we start moving earlier. So um, where do we do this? Update game. Do but buff. Do but. <laughs> uh, this causes me so much. This causes me so much enjoyment. Wait. Do but. Okay. So here we did something. Oh, jeez. Um, Do but there we go. Uh, logo T um, if logo T is greater than zero, then logo T equals zero. Something like this. So if we are um, if the logo is visible on the screen, we're just gonna end this. So now when we move the logo, disappears on its own. Is is what I'm I'm thinking here, and so the now this logo should, shouldn't shouldn't be drawn. Hopefully, it's not being drawn. And then if we restart it, it's still uh, it's still there, perfect. And it's, you know it sticks around and it disappears later on. Cool. Um, maybe I just realized something. It's the logo was underneath the the menus. So maybe we not do it in this draw function here. Maybe not here, draw logo, but actually here in the very in the actual draw function. That might be might be better. So here check fade because here, uh, yeah. So let's do it after the windows draw logo. L let's not not make it underscore. Let's make it an underscore only stuff for actual different game modes. Um, yeah. So let's that 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 might be a good idea. And again, we're doing some update stuff when we're drawing things. Um, that's generally something that you want to keep apart. But I think in this specific case, that's fine uh, because it's just like a little logo. It's, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really change like the game state or anything. Yeah, now the logo is on top of the, the window. That's what we wanted. Uh, <laughs> this is my Christian dab. <laughs> um, okay. Um, yeah, so this covers the logos. Now I want to cover more stuff. Um, I want to um, finish, uh, when, when you finish the game, never, no matter if you lose or win, I want to show a big um, thing, uh, a logo, another logo, another text. But I also want to print some stats on a screen. So let me take care of that part first, for, um, at, maybe. So we are, I'm th I was thinking about something like this. It's going to be also part of draw, and we're going to call this function draw stats. And so we're going to use this new function. I kind of like uh, this is very basic, but I just learned about this very recent color, and it sets the color of the text without setting it for individual lines. It just sets for all of the text that comes afterwards. Equally, cursor uh, forty four fifty is a good number that sets the position of where the, the text cursor should begin, again, without setting it for the print statement. So all of the print statements will start at this cursor and at this color. And if you don't say on what position, what color the, the, uh, the print statement will have, it will just add you know, another line underneath and so forth. So, so we can do something like print floor, so we can like, you know, specify which floor we died, xx, you know. Uh, so far, we're just gonna do some bogus values here, but you know, later on we can add. Um, so I want to keep track of the floor steps. 
uh, kills, how many um, how many mobs you killed, and meals. And that's the cool about how many th food you eat you've eaten. And the cool thing about this is you see that all of these have the letter, um, same amount of letters. <laughs> so this looks really will look really nice and 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 uh, tidy. <clears throat> so the only thing left to do is to uh, actually say draw. And I think we call this draw. Yeah, we have a draw gover and draw win. These are like two types of draw functions, but they basically do the same thing, right? Can we somehow merge this? Well, we could, but on the other hand, hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're gonna really save a lot of Yeah, maybe. So it's like you're gonna call this new function draw end. <clears throat> um, we're gonna clear the screen. Um, here as well, we will would draw the text, but that's something that comes later. And we're gonna draw the stats. And here in the gameplay. Um, Check end, somewhere is check end. There we go, check end. And instead of the gover, we're gonna go draw end. Oops. For some reason I, s oh no, no, no. Uh, well, if if that's gonna be gover, then let's uh, draw gover as well. Maybe draw, update gover and draw gover. Um, and then we can comment this out. And this is going to be the new draw gover. <clears throat> now uh, so we somehow have to kind of like specify, um, you know, how did we die? So maybe we might do something like we're going we're going to use a function, uh, a couple of variables to specify which logo to show now. So something like um, gover spr. Um, so for the win um, that's going to be sprite number 128 uh, gover underscore x is going to be 13 giver <clears throat> and gover y is going to be 30 i think it's going to be 30 in either way so we don't care about that um, but width and height is something that we can care so it's like 13 yeah, width is just something we can care. So these three numbers will change. Uh, and then here for, that's when we died. So this is gonna be a bit differently. So now this could be, oh wait, no, 130 is not the right tar. Um, so 128 is the one when we, this is when we, when we win this. So it's gonna be 112 because I'm using numbers from my prototype and then the sprite layout was slightly different in prototype. Um, 112 for the sprite when we win and when we lose it's gonna be sprite number 80 so this is gonna be 80 and the X position of that sprite in order to make it all nice and centered is gonna be 28 no, no yes 28 and then the width is gonna be 9 I'm gonna put a star uh, there's already a star here yeah I think there's a way of making the, all of this a bit more efficient because all of these are like fade out and the updates are all these the same thing. The only thing that changes now is the, are the, those error, um, those um, variables. Okay, so this means now we only have to draw the actual logo. So first, um, I'm gonna set the transparency as I did before. So blue becomes transparent. And then I'm gonna draw spur, gover spur, gover x, um, y position is gonna be 30, uh, gover width, and two. So we're basically grabbing all the variables that define you know, what kind of text to show, and we're using them to show our text. Um, all right, so let's see how this looks. Now we need to get killed. It's 
kind of difficult to get killed sometimes. Okay. So this is going to be our dead screen. That seems seems pretty good. And now we can like fill this later on with. Um, it might be it might be worthwhile not just like to show the the attacks, but also maybe to show underneath to maybe something like this, and then like. Press X, something like this, just like so people know that what to. Um, so let's let's see if we can get killed. Might be worthwhile to put it on the button. Yeah, maybe. Maybe maybe you should make it blink. So instead of the draw stats function, uh, we might put it in the update function, and uh, here, no, in the draw function. And when we draw the gover, actually, so now that the draw stats are, um, that we only have one function that has, because previously I had it in a special function because I had two different draw functions that would draw draw the game over. But now that we have only one function that draws the game over. It might be actually worthwhile to um, merge everything. So it's going to be like this. And then print press x. <clears throat> now we have to figure out some good location for this, right? So let's go like um, 44. Um, let's go 46 and like 80. I don't know. And then uh, it's going to be color five. And then we're going to use maybe like some kind of, yeah. Now, now this this is getting ridiculous. So let's let me use the button press to die immediately. Um, where is it? Uh, there. Um, P mob <laughs> dot HP equals zero. We're just gonna die like this. And then if you move, okay. This looks pretty good. Maybe a bit further down the line, maybe just like 90. So it's like more separated. Yeah, that looks good. And now the five is something we can be like um, plus sign time. Let's see if that works. It did not. Um, oh yeah, uh, maybe like this and then my, uh, multiply by two. So. That looks fa funky. Uh, why is it looking so weird? Oh, because sometimes it gets negative as well. <gasps> I see. Let's go absolute sun sign time. A bit chaotic, should be maybe a bit slower. So let's go time divided by five. Maybe divided by three, just trying to find the right frequency here. Yeah. That seems better, maybe. Good. So, what else? Um, yeah, we need to maybe those stats should get filled with info. Oh, by the way, let's see if we can actually finish the game as well. That would be kind of nice. Um, so, let's make it so that win equals true. Oops. Yeah, that seems good. 
Maybe Kyobasa needs to go to the right a little bit. Yeah, let's go to the right a little bit. Tools, gameplay. Uh, 28 might not be the right one. Yeah, this is win. Um, let's go 16. Mm, might have been too much. Let's go 15. Okay. Mm. Okay, so now I would, as the only thing I want to be doing, like there's two more things. Um, this might be a bit of a long episode. So one thing I want to do is I want to actually add the stats um, that will keep, tri tri um, keep track of all of, all, of the, all of the things that we are showing there. And I will just copy this out because this is basically, um, you know, a list of, of variables. But basically here, steps, kills, meals. These are like the three important things and maybe um, stat killed um, and that's good that will or, or killer killer yeah maybe something like this uh, that's gonna be the, the type of the um, the name of the monster that killed you if you die so first let's do steps so every time we move we're gonna uh, okay but first let's just plug in those values into our draw function so something like, so steps, dot, dot, steps, right? Floor, we can just like, dot, dot, floor. And then here kills, uh, we can, can go and go dot, dot, st kills. And meals, we're gonna go dot, dot, meals. Oh, ST meals. Okay, so now let's let's do meals maybe first since we're already here. So when we eat something, we're gonna go if MB equals um, P mob, then meals plus equals one. Just something like this. So whenever there's like eat function executed for our, and uh, the, the target mob is the player, you will eat it. Uh, what else? Kills. So let's do the kills. So that's gonna be when we hit something. Uh, so it's a gameplay. Uh, so it's gonna be maybe hit mob here. And here's where we hit a mob. So we're gonna go if um, defm is not equals p mob, then Kills. Ah, when I lose it, okay, kills. And here is something we can do as well. Uh, otherwise, else, um, and then we're gonna go killer. So the last person that attacked you uh, will get saved is uh, in this string. Hate it when I when I when I miss the tab. So, sd killer equals. Um, uh, we're not saving the name of the mob in our mob, do, do we? We not. We should. Let's go something like name equals. Um, mob name. And you know that that's really funny because we could even like add like custom names to the mob. So each each mob has like a different name. That would be kind of really funny. <laughs> so the way we had like custom names for our for our um, uh, food, we could even have like custom mobs for mo uh, names for mobs. But I don't think that's that's necessary uh, because that will require like a lot of tokens for something that's really not that important. But you know, still. Um, so. If that happens, then attack me dot name. Um, good. And the only thing left is then we got the, the meals, we got the kills, we got the killer, and then just steps. So we do something like gameplay. It's gonna be just actual steps. Mob walk. 
not the interaction stuff, just actual steps. So um, it's going to be steps equals plus uh, plus equals one. Why? Because that's easy to do. <laughs> that's my only reasoning here. Okay. So let's see how this works. So I'm going to walk around a little bit, and then if we press this button, walk more and more. And more. Uh, yeah, we went 12 steps. We have zero kills, and we ate nothing. So let's see if, the, if we eat something. Let's try to get one on all of those stats. So oops, I pressed the button. Ugh. This, this is going to be require some. It's kind of a bit bad that we are um, counting the steps in this area. Maybe we're going to reset the steps when we uh, go up to the floor number one, just in case. Um, yeah, so I'm going to eat something. Oh no, I'm cursed. No, that's okay. That's okay. So I'm going to try to get a kill in. Press this button. And that's yeah, that 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 solves the deal. So let me let me make the steps just so it tracks correctly. Uh, let's see. Let me put it here on again gen floor. Um, hmm. Oh, fine. If. <clears throat> Um, maybe even we could then the steps we, we don't actually need it then so at least we're saving a bit bun of token I'm, I'm getting really stingy with tokens now at the end here um, one last thing maybe adding this killer thing so we know who killed us if we get killed um, this means also that maybe showing the floor mode might might be not really necessary if we're actually winning so it's something like um, if win if not win then um print killed by dot dot and then killer by a let's try that uh oh what oh interesting yeah, oh oh interesting yeah okay so we need, I guess we need st steps after all we need to put it somewhere and another way of doing this would be maybe to not count the steps in the in the zero floor Okay, let's get killed by a, by a slime. Killed by a slime. That's perfect. I don't like the positioning of the killed by a slime. So maybe we're gonna put it... Can we do this? Can we put specify exactly where we're printing? Let's try that. Killed by a slime. Uh, then put... Um, first of all, p mob dot hp equals zero. P mob dot uh, n n no um, st steps um i know killer equals slime we kind of simulate being killed by a slime for now um and then killed by a, a and then i'm not exactly sure what the placement is going to be here um so 4450 was previously so let's go 44 and uh 40 and then and then we, we're going to even make it brighter so it's going to be color six so it's going to be underneath the text that's where I want to put it. Let's see how that looks. Hmm. But that breaks the 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 pattern. That resets the the color in the cursor. <clears throat> 
Well, you know, it's gonna cost us a bit, but it's, it's, I think it's, it's worth it. Yeah, something like this. Um, 4440. Oh no, that's fine. It's just like the placement is not correct. Okay, so let's go um, 40, just like, you know, tricking the, mat the layout here. Uh, further down, so 44. Too much down, 43. Um, and you know, this is, let's see how 42 looks. 43 was okay, but 42 might be better. Uh, 43 was better. And then like 30 here. Seems good. Um, then here maybe 50. Um, nah. 60. <clears throat> um, 56. Yeah. The thing is like, uh, it doesn't really look centered. Do we have a centered drawing function? Is that something that we have maybe? And, I usually have like a center draw function. No, we don't. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, so let's put it further down to the left, the, the text. So even, even further down, so like 28. Yeah, that seems better maybe because slime is pretty short. I think the other one, text, the other characters are or longer, and you know the text underneath it's kind of like not doesn't look quite centered, but I think that's okay because um, most of the time we're gonna have double digits and then uh, that will look um, look a lot better. I think that's 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 okay. Killed by a slime, and then uh, I want to see how it looks when I die, uh, when I win the game. Perfect. Now here's the, the moment where we might save these kind of stats maybe into save game, you know, so we get, get like a, the best possible score and so forth. But I don't think that's necessary. Something I would do instead now is actually add the sound. But this is, episode is getting very, very long. So that's something that comes up in the next episode. Um, the code for this episode is gonna be down there in doobly-doo and you should visit our t-shirt store where you can get those beautiful t-shirts. And we're getting very close to these guys. It's 2000? No, no, it's mm, 1500 around. It's, it's, I'm getting very nervous. Uh, you should also visit the Discord, so where people are hanging out and discussing this. I really want to like polish this game up. I want to like make sure that gameplay works. So if you have any suggestions, you know, how to tweak the game, how to maybe add some gameplay mechanics, I would appreciate your feedback. See you on the next episode, guys. Bye bye.